Thanks for joining us on Valley News Live as we go through the six o'clock hour and close the books on the month of March. Good riddance. We started out with it coming in like a lion. It's going out like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. We have a blizzard ongoing down in our South Dakota counties and some heavy wet cement closing the interstate causing well, you can see the tractor trailers lining up there at the Dakota Magic Casino as the interstate has been closed. Let's get right to the numbers as far as snowfall potential with this system. Notice Fargo, Moorhead, Jamestown. No significant snowfall here other than a few flakes and flurries, but anyone in the southern half of our viewing area along I-94, along Highway 10 and Point South, just stay home if you don't have to travel because that wind is ripping and freezing up roads and it's a mess out there, very icy. We're talking five to nine inches of snow through northeast South Dakota and tucking into our southern North Dakota counties, Richland, uh, Sargent County and Otter Tail County. From Fergus Falls and Point South into Grant, Wilkin, Traverse, as well as, well, Douglas County. Not so good news there. And we're going to have a quick ramping up of snowfall totals in Richland County and in Otter Tail County from nothing at all as far as accumulation goes to five inches like that. Now, if you're heading to the Twin Cities, you can see from Fergus Falls, maybe even Rothsay, all the way into Minneapolis, heavy snow potential. You can see upwards of a foot or more in portions of the metro area there. And there will be some icing taking place as well. A few tenths of an inch possible for tricky travel tonight. So stay home if you can. Quiet up north. Temperatures in the 30s for most. The wind will exceed 45 miles per hour. In fact, it's been kissing 50 miles per hour in southeast North Dakota. Heavy bands of snow, Sisseton Hills, through southeast North Dakota and the lakes country, country rather. From Detroit Lakes, Cormorant Lakes, and points south through all of Otter Tail County, accumulating snow, heavy and very wet, will continue while the icing will be replaced by snow out to the east as well. The wind gets ridiculous as we cross into the 10 o'clock hour with some gusts approaching 50 plus miles per hour. Even across the treed area of Minnesota in the I-94 corridor with that crosswind and heavy snow, I think there's going to be some impossible travel there as well. Finally, by midnight and beyond, it's out of our viewing area, but it continues in the Twin Cities until the wee hours of the morning. So if you have travel plans south of Fargo or toward the Twin Cities or maybe even out towards Duluth or Bemidji, keep in mind there may be some areas of tricky travel conditions. Single digit temperatures to start a very chilly and dry morning will rebound into the near 30 degree range as we'll have a quieter day and a chance to clean up. This huge system expands through our area where we have thunder, snow and Thunder Sleet in the Sisseton Hills and the I-94 corridor there near the Sock Rapids, Sock Center area heading out towards St. Cloud and the Twin Cities. Look at the heavy rain making its way in there. Now, a closer look at this heavy band moving into Lake City like we showed you. Rosslyn all the way up into the Sisseton area. Very heavy, one to two inch rates of snowfall and thunder sleet that will be accumulating because of the convective nature. It's going to fall fairly quickly. All right, we do have a tornado outbreak from Texas all the way into look at this heading towards Memphis. Some active tornado warnings there. And then as I get out of the way, Davenport, Iowa heading into portions of Illinois, strong to severe thunderstorms that kiss southern Minnesota as well. 30s for most. It's cooler and drier for you in the West. We have mid 20s. Let's take a check into that next system that's going to be heading our way Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. This is a huge, impactful system, multi-state, multi-day event. And because of that, it could dump some very heavy snowfall. And we're talking, you know, generally a track that will take most of our viewing area a good probability of seeing at least six inches. There is a legitimate risk, as we've been talking about the last couple of days, of a foot or more of snow in the path of that storm. Have your Valley News Live weather app handy. In fact, go check it out. We've got a model comparison video, numerous updates on tonight's event. Quieter Saturday, Sunday, snow up north mainly. Then as we head into our first alert weather days next week to begin the month of April in a wintry fashion, it looks quieter as we head toward your Easter Sunday. Justin. I sure hope summer falls on the weekend this year. It'll Thanks, nice. Hutch. <laughs> Still ahead, the grand opening of a new facility at UND about a booming tech industry they want to be on the front lines of.